पी सी एच एस मीडिया प्रोग्राम खरी खरी में आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत आपको नमस्कार सत श्री अकाल और अदाबस वेलकम टू पी सी एच एस मीडिया प्रोग्राम खरी खरी प्योर एंड सिंपल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ एंड मेंटल वेलनेस यू प्रॉबली हर्ड अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ सो मेनी टाइम्स हाउ एवर यू मे नॉट हैव हैड एन एक्सपीरियंस listening to a story of a father a brother and a friend as to what happens in their life when they have had someone lost to mental illness mental health and mental wellness and mental illness these are all under one umbrella mental illness is when there is a diagnosis mental wellness is when we need to take care of ourselves of our mental health so today i'm going to introduce you to my co-host and a father who is going to talk about his experience uh rakesh tiwari and he is going to share his experience a little bit later on in this program rakesh can you please introduce yourself uh yes uh, as you mentioned my name rakesh tiwari and today is 26th june and this 26th june i will never ever forget and all those people who are related to and who knew prashant and they will never forget uh, so prashant passed away today's day in the hospital and uh, of course and his father and uh, and uh, gautam is here also with us Yeah. Okay. So as a family to uh we have been through and we are still going through all this uh, uh what we have to uh, the trauma this this situation and we are we are in in between in middle. Today's day is uh, in my understanding uh a question mark mm-hmm. uh that uh to the health system a mental health right. system to the judiciary to the uh, also the policing system as well that where are we standing because let me put let me say this one thing for sure clearly uh, prashant's date of birth is uh, he was born on 28th of february 1994 and i was expecting uh, and not expecting it was confirmed to us that uh, uh, in the month of february 2020 uh prashant uh, case uh, the trial will begin from 6th of january uh judge has decided but again i come to know that it was decided in october uh, 2020 uh, 20 uh, 18 i will say 24th of october it was decided uh in the court and judge has given that okay 34 days trial will happen i was expecting i was waiting for it and mm-hmm. 6 years has passed we come to know in the month of january on 8th of january we were told that the trial is not going to happen so we're still waiting for justice so okay. i say in prashant's case and today's day and i'm sorry and i feel sad that till date uh in canada in ontario uh, the health system has failed prashant and the justice system also has failed prashant and rakesh we are seeing examples of that uh even today right yep. uh with the uh, uh black people being shot a south asian man having been shot uh so definitely the system haven't caught up in terms of how to support people with mental health i want to take you a little bit back um i want you to share your experience with our viewers um at what point did you realize that prashant was dealing with mental illness see uh we are talking about 2014 uh you know uh, as a father if you see for my both son i have you know this this is our culture uh that uh you are taught to once you have a kids that you devote your life towards them and you forget about everything else and so they can come up mm-hmm. prashant was 20 year old 
uh, in my understanding, um, ups and downs of life were always there for anybody and everybody it is there. But he has, was never gone to the hospital, never needed to, okay, he was he has completed his grade 12. Uh, and we have Sukhmin and Gautam. Sukhmin was his, uh, uh, you know, you can say, uh, uh, you know, uh, student, uh, not a student, I will say that he was, he was studying with him over there too, so mm -hmm. he can uh, tell us a bit more. But Prashant, I come to know about mental health when in the month of June. Uh, he and, and how long ago was that before um, this whole turmoil uh, took place and everything sort of turned around uh, in your life and in Prashant's life? Uh, can you repeat? Let me so your uh, what Prashant you passed... Uh, in, on 26th of June 2014. 2014. Yes. So how long ago... Before 2014, did you realize that Prashant was going through uh, a lot of challenges in his life that he had to be hospitalized? Not at all. I had no idea about it, that he needed to be hospitalized at all. Uh, you, uh, you know, he was a 20-year-old uh, mm -hmm. youth, okay, wanted to see the world in his view, and mm -hmm. he was... He was, you know, put it this way, he was, uh, you know, he will discuss with at great length. He will ask questions. He was an environmentalist. He was questioning the system. He mm -hmm. And he has seen something in, a, you know, uh, in his school. Let me say this, this particular incident, I think in 2012, I found not wrong here mm -hmm. where uh, two kids from this uh, uh, from his school um, and they had uh, uh, you know uh, they committed suicide they jumped off from the bridge and that was a news at that time and prashant has said that time the dad the system has felt them mm -hmm. everybody was knowing that what these kids were going through and still uh, and they felt and he was very much disturbed with right. that and slowly but he has come to terms with that but I'm, I'm very sure that has affected him up to a certain right. length and uh, uh, <coughs> when you're talking about hospitalizing or anything that was not an issue but definitely he was in my understanding as a father uh, I was in, in India uh, and uh, Gautam was here and I was gone in the month of April Prashant was mean in between time put it this way for a, about a year uh, he uh, he was with his mother, and then he said he came back again and uh, to my place, and uh, at that time uh, when I was talking to him, I was I, I was kind of in his voice. I was noticing that he's feeling sad, uh, mm -hmm. or somewhere something is there. But I was not able to uh, understand what is going on, what not. I was giving him uh, courage, and he was he started improving. Let me say from my side, he went to see movie with his friends. He started going to gym and whatnot, and I was put in so, this way in India, right. so far away. So and the so signs, signs were not necessarily there for you to kind of um, realize that. Yes, because I was not help. able to see him. Right. But I came on thirteenth of June uh, from India. And then I saw him and I realized that uh, he's not the Prashant I knew before. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, and he's, he's so uh, I spoke to a uh, PCHS organization, uh, Mr. Balde Mutta, you know, and he's, he's a great friend and he was always there with Prashant too, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, uh, so I spoke to him that maybe I could bring him. So on 16th of June, what happened that uh, I had to, uh, you know, Prashant has called me. I, you know, uh, that, that after my radio program, that, that I need to talk to you, I need to see you. Right. And then I come to know that he told me that, Dad, I need help. I have never hurt anybody else. I have never hurt myself. But mm -hmm. I have hurt myself. I need help. Don't think only your counseling will do. That was his exact words. So he was already um, in, in a state of... Uh, uh, emergency himself when he when you and and prashant spoke and from our conversations and i i i understand that he had to be hospitalized yes i had to take I wanted, him to the hospital yes i want to bring uh, gotham and sukman in in this conversation because we have limited time and uh, Rakesh, you talked about your experience as a father, that you're still struggling with uh, with the trauma, with the loss of your son uh, to this day. Um, and I know that uh, Gautam uh, is, is Prashant's brother, and uh, Sukhmin is uh, Prashant's friend. So 
uh, Gautam, I'm going to ask you uh, to share a little bit about your experience. So after so many years, um, as a brother, uh, what would you say, how are you dealing with this trauma in your family? And what are you doing for your mental wellness? Um, in terms of dealing with the trauma, uh, having yourself surrounded by friends and family, I think is, is very important. Uh, because again, it is it's trauma, so it's not uh, something that'll ever go away in my lifetime or in my dad's lifetime or in my fr in Prashant's friend's lifetime. So um, definitely just taking that awareness. And I think for me, learning from it and making sure to communicate um, as much as I can to the people who I love and making sure that they have a safe environment to communicate to me in case uh, anyone's mental health is um, deteriorating. I think is the way that I deal with it. So, um, Sukman, how about you? You you were Prashant's friend, and um, you were with him uh, through high school. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with Prashant and how are you dealing with it today? Absolutely. Um, I want to preface this by giving a little bit of a, an understanding of who Prashant was. Prashant was, a, was a, a, a bold, strong, inspirational person who was driven in every way possible to, to help make the world a better place. He was the type of person you went to when you needed help. He was the type of person you would go to uh, when you needed to just get motivated, have a good laugh. Um, and he was the type of person who, if he, if he was walking down the hallways and he, and he and he saw that you were down, he would he would spend time with you and, and help uplift you. So seeing someone like that, who encouraged to, to help make the world a better place, who was your reason to smile, break down like that really, really hurts you. And what it puts into perspective is that it can happen to anyone. Right. Because the relationship that, that uh, you have with your friends isn't the same that you have with your family. And, and, and I would argue that your relationship with your family is a little bit more formal. And, and when you see that your friend is starting to deteriorate and, and when those conversations start to come out, even like Uncle said, it was hard to tell because mm -hmm. it, you just don't, you never would have thought that he would be the person to, to go through this. And then you try to be there for that person. But the lessons learned is that you need to, to, to take that preventative action early. You need to, to be there for the people around you. Uh, you need to build that resiliency because anyone and everyone uh, is, is susceptible to, to the, the dangers of, of mental health if, if it's not addressed early. And Sukman, you said a very important point, and, and that is it can happen to anyone. And that is what uh, I, I like our viewers to also uh, take away from this, because oftentimes, you know, we kind of uh, have a picture in our mind as to who we think that people who have mental illness look like. They're like everyone else. They're like you. They're like me. They're like Rakesh, you know, uh, people who are sitting around us. Right. So uh, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I appreciate you sharing about Prashant, who he was as a person, uh, that he was so strong. Uh, I also want to um, thank Gotham for sharing his experience as a, as a brother. I'm sure it is not easy uh, going through life on an ongoing basis, on daily basis, knowing about your brother and the struggles that he went through and the end he he had. Uh, I want to bring Sumit Rai in. Uh, uh, Sumit is here with me. He is a mental health case manager here at PCHS. Uh, Sumit, I would like to ask you a little bit about, uh, as a case manager, yes. can you talk about your role and about what you see in mental health and mental illnesses? Sure. Um, firstly, thank you all for having me and I appreciate it. And um, when it comes to case management, it's a role about connecting individuals to services, mm -hmm. giving them that support of counseling. And I'm involved in long-term counseling. So it can go anywhere to six months and somewhere beyond that. 
I've been working in this field for over five years right now. And um, I'm a registered social worker who has his master's in social work. And one thing what I have realized about this field, non-biasedly speaking, coming from within the field, the underfunding in this field speaks to volumes of what these families and friends have went through. Beyond underfunding, the lack of understanding in our communities, in policies, in the healthcare systems, in our cultural values, in everything. Mental health is so stigmatized that it's difficult even sometimes getting the assistance you need as a worker when you know funding is cut, you can only go so far. So it makes you think, we go through times where we're having situations where non-mental health experts are responding to mental health needs. Right. You see that in um, what just happened in these past few months, mm -hmm. whether it was an individual, just a Moulton, whose name I cannot remember the moment, whether it was DeAndre Campbell mm -hmm. from Brampton, police was shot for a mental health call, or whether it was Regis Korshinsky. Right. The cues that fell from a um, 40-story balcony, yeah. who was also called for mental health reasons. So what I've realized in my work, in my experience, is there's a need. Mm -hmm. Everyone at some point has mental health. Whether you have ever changed different lands, whether you have ever changed different countries, if you've ever gone through a divorce or a relationship has ended, if someone loved has ever passed away, these are all terms of mental health. And as you explained earlier, there's mental health diagnosis and other everyday mental health that goes under the radar, where we generally can go to work, where it doesn't get noticed, which is really disguisable. And living in this capital world where everyone is so enthralled in values of money and capital, mental health it becomes a minuscule conversation. Thank you for sharing that, uh, uh, Sumit. Uh, you know, just as you were mentioning about uh, mental health has impact on even if you're moving here as a newcomer. And I remember um, as a high school student, when I moved here, yes. um, I went through a lot of mental health challenges because I had to balance life between home and I had to balance life between school yes. and try to fit in. And I was new and... Um, I went through challenges myself Definitely. and you know I was just thinking about how do people communicate about mental health you know about like we hear moms we hear students oh mera padhan nu bilkul nahi ji karda ya mera koi kam karan nu ji nahi karda like you know these things and but they keep going you know you keep hearing about these things uh, on ongoing basis and yes. yet we kind of ignore these you know, subtle, very subtle uh, points, right, um, which indicate that there is perhaps sadness yes. or depression, yes. right? Yes. And so mental health is a really tricky field and mental wellness is very tricky, but we do hear here and there, um, you know, that there is some sadness mm -hmm. and that sadness is continuous. Um, Rakesh, can you tell us a little bit about um, what are you doing today to change? Uh, Sumit talked about, for example, uh, the lack of um, resources and lack of um, understanding about mental health. Can you share about what are you doing as a father, as a professional, uh, and as my co-host uh, in terms of uh, raising awareness in the community or involving community into addressing these issues, not just in terms of awareness, but also at a systematic level. Let me say one thing. Uh, those people who die due to the mental health, we should stop calling that suicide. First thing, that's not suicide. That's something, put it this way, that if somebody goes in the hospital and uh, the person doesn't get taken care and the person dies. Would you call us would we call it suicide? No. If somebody goes to the hospital, the person has a heart attack or anything, if it doesn't get treated, would we call that suicide? So I refused the day because Prashant went voluntarily mm -hmm. to the hospital. I took him to the hospital. He stayed 10 days. 
I had no idea about it what he what he was diagnosed with that. 10 days is not a smart uh, you know small time. Mm -hmm. We are talking about 10 days okay and in between time he, uh, we, have, we have been totally cut off from him like we were going talking to him but there was no communication from the hospital from the doctors or uh, uh, whatsoever. No, nothing at all other than that I go and talk to. So, Sukhmin and uh, Gautam can say. And when you ask me, especially that what I'm trying to do, what I'm doing it, the creating that awareness, let me say this. Uh, we are all here. From our here to the nail, billions and billions of dollars industries are there. Mm -hmm. And you know that. Right? We are all aware of it. Okay, there is spas are there, there is research are there, a lot of things are there going. But our whole body functions due to our brain, our mind. If somebody is brain dead, we call them is dead. Okay, there is no recourse. There, you cannot survive them. You cannot bring them back. So uh, it is very hard. Let's put it this way. Uh, when I realized that what happened to Prashant, I was facing like the whole world against me. Because everybody is like, okay, Prashant died. Okay, he's committed suicide. So you know what? You can't do anything. He was in the hospital. He, no, he was not in charge of himself. He went to the hospital because he wanted mm -hmm. help. And and so, I have come to know that over the, over three hundred people in two thousand fourteen have died in the hospital scare. So that's the last place you go. You are in an ICU. You are in the hospital scare. That's the best thing can happen. That from a perspective that you have been brought yeah. over there. So, so I created. In 2014, I started uh, awareness campaign. In 2014, in the mm -hmm. month of August, uh, with the help of PCHS, we did a program. In 2000, you know, I right after that because that was helping me. Yeah. Because right away, because otherwise, uh, you know, I would have been sinking too. So I start. I, I channelized my energy. I went over there. Sukmin was part of it. Gautam was part of it. They did their programs over there uh, with the you know uh, uh, you know skits and all that. Okay, in 2000, so I have started, I, I first thing is that, that mental health issues uh, became a stigma right. at, at that time. Now we are talking much more about it. Mm -hmm. People are coming to know, they are coming openly now. But there is much more need to be done in order when we are talking about uh, uh, other than awareness. We need mm -hmm. complete full mental health reform. Right. Mm -hmm. And, so and to, to, to change, uh, the, the, uh, to bring about reform, and mm -hmm. I think this is what our viewers need to understand, that yes. you need to get involved. Yeah, yeah. You need to get involved and you need to join, um, you know, and, and language, can we cannot say language is a barrier, especially now. Um, so you need to be able to connect with uh, people. Uh, so Rakesh, would you say, is there a, um, a a campaign or or Sumit? I'd ask you yeah. to oh, yes, yes, something yes. that people can join in this fight and yes. and bring uh, about uh, systematic change. I would like to say change? one thing. Uh, sure. sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, individual efforts. You know, whatever we are doing. See, as I have, you know, I'm, I'm me, Gautam, Sukhmin. We are all miss whosoever they are. We are related to Prashant. We we are doing whatever individual help. I've created. I have. It started, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, mental health for us, uh, a website. It's not there up and running because one person cannot uh, mm -hmm. run whole these things. But yeah. PCHS organization is there and there are a lot of other organizations are there. So our, I'm very sure that our individual efforts are people, a lot of people who are listening to us, who are watching to us. They might be trying to do something too, but that is individual. Yeah. So we have to come together. Uh, and and, uh, and ask for mental health reform like, because I have want to stress this point that mental health issues are not secondary to the COVID-19. This is the next epidemic we are we is, is following us mm -hmm. that where really the mass suicide and suicides mm -hmm. can start happen. And, you know, I don't want to create any, any uh, say anything such as like that. Okay, uh, uh, just a panic, yeah, a panic. Yeah. but health officials CA match and all those they are saying it right so Samit so what would you suggest like what can people do now where well, can they go who what what uh, organization or committee can they join to one bring thing I can say I 100% agree with mental health reform 
when we talk about mental health reform, people ask and say, where's that money going to come from? What's going to happen? How do we get that money? One new campaign I suggest everyone to educate themselves about, and I will explain it, is defund the police. What is defunding the police? A lot of times when we hear defund the police, people think, well, police need money. Um, what, are you gonna, what do you mean? Why are you going to take money away from the police? No. Toronto Police this year got $1.2 billion in funding. Peel Police got $442 million in funding. Mm -hmm. By defunding the police means taking these major lump sum monies they're already getting and redistributing it to areas where they're not educated in. Right. Why are police responding to mental health calls? Police are not social workers. Police are not mental health experts. Police are not negotiators or de-escalators. So this money that is overfunded into the policing system, they could be better into crisis line where, for example, transportation vehicles could be funded so they can go or something like that. Defunding the police is important and redistributing that money back in our communities to a point where better mental health service, better recreational activities, and better support systems for our youth, adults, and everyone for all ages. Because one thing is correct, there's an epidemic right now when it comes to mental health, mm -hmm. when it comes to COVID, and when it comes to the hospital systems actually not taking into concern the matter at that time. Yeah. I think, so, and, I think we should ask, really we should talk yes. to Gautam, I'm Gautam gonna, and, yes, please. I, uh, that, uh, I was going to Gautam, actually, that's, yeah. that's where my, my next uh, uh, question was going to be. Gautam, um, what would you say as a brother? What would you say to the viewers? Uh, what do we need to do uh, to make sure that we support our family members, we support our family, and that we do something in the community? Okay, well, first off, I guess I want to go back to the question that you brought up to my dad is, when did we notice the depression, right? I had been with my brother um, uh, w uh, during the preceding months before his death. And the first thing you need to take a look for is change in behavior and um, personality or attitude. So for example, like Sukman said, and thank you Sukman, uh, but my brother was extremely like rambunctious, high energy. So it was easy to see when his energy switched and he became introverted. Um, so something to take in for example is, is this person isolated? Are they communicating? Are they talking to friends or family? Okay, if you don't see them communicating with people, that's one thing to take in. Another thing to take in to notice that I noticed was sleeping pattern changes. So if the person around you is either sleeping not at all or sleeping way too much, mm -hmm. um, usually that means they're avoiding interaction or avoiding, you know, anything, right? So, so right. sleeping pattern changes, okay change in personality, uh, mm -hmm. more introverted. They don't have energy. If you notice that they don't have energy to do things, they're not activated. Um, mm -hmm. they don't, when they're a part of activities, they're not um, active participants, right? right? So those are things that you know your family, you know the people in your family, you know how they act regularly. So during this time, um, pay attention to the ones around you. And even if everyone is healthy, um, I think it's important for you to get into the habit of regularly asking, hey, how are you feeling? Yeah. And I think when it comes to the conversation between immigrant, uh, immigrant parents and second generation kids, a lot of immigrant parents came to Canada under a survival mode, yes. right? And when you're under survival mode, you're not thinking of your mental health. You're saying, I need to provide for myself, for my family, for my kids, my family back home. Second generation immigrants, uh, to immigrant parents, like my generation, if we were born here, we aren't born with that same mentality. So there's, the, there the, is... The resiliency is, that that uh, you uh, the immigrant parents have had is not necessarily there for Canadian-born children. Is that correct, Gotham? Is that what I'm understanding? Right. And, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to just... Uh, Yes, I don't want to call it resiliency in the same way, but it's just like, yeah, we're not put in, you know what, you're right, yes, resiliency, because we're not put in a position where we, the only thing that we need to think about is, okay, you know, uh, how do I 
make the put food on the table. However, during our generation, I, f I find that there is a crisis of purpose, right? Um, we grew up being told that you go to university, you get a job, you make money, you're good, right? And obviously, as we see in times of economic crisis, even before COVID, um, that that didn't really pan out as necessarily mm -hmm. the case, right? Is that not every child can be uh, a 90, 95 percenter who goes to med school, comes out as a doctor, everything's good. They love their job. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, we do have to, we have to pay attention that for young adults, there is a lack of, of, of purpose and it takes time. And so I understand that if you are in a position where you have to survive, that of course you're going to, you're, you're going to just focus on that, get whatever job you can, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the blessing and the curse is that uh, parents who have immigrated here have given their children the room, the resources, and the time to be able to choose what we want to do. Right. And, and God, and so, that's, yeah. so you're, you're sharing yeah. extremely important uh, views on, on, um, on uh, parent and uh, children who are born here, uh, communication, understanding, uh, not just from the educational uh, uh, field, but also from a social, emotional field. And I know that uh, it, I'd love for us to continue talking, and I don't think that today is going to be the end of this conversation. Uh, you've right. mentioned really important points in terms of parents know their child best and they need to pay attention to the patterns uh, that their children have and to the change in behavior. Those are often the indicators. You're absolutely right in that. And I just want to go to Sukman um, and ask Sukman uh, a question about uh, Sukman, as a friend, how would you say you have continued raising awareness in the community and and wh what are your thoughts in terms of what Gotham shared uh, as to uh, the the um, uh, support and communication that happens between parents can you share about that please yeah absolutely uh, first thing I want to say is I, I echo all of Gotham's words it's a different struggle that we face and and especially the language barrier and the cultural gaps that we have with our parents makes make it that much more difficult in order for us to to have these conversations at depth. It's not just it's not just a, we have a hard time expressing ourselves in a language. It's also the fact that they won't understand the struggles. So in order to address these issues, it's it comes down to different levels. It comes down to the level of the individual uh, having the comfort in order to speak to the parents. But that's gonna start from the parents being open-minded and understanding that the struggle is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And not just saying, hey, get over it. Because, yes. because this is a serious illness. But on top of that, it's also, it's, it's a societal thing. So it's individual, it's family, but it's also a societal thing. It's a question, right. does our society have a stigma? Which we do, and can we recognize that stigma and try to fight it and fix it? And recognize that every person in this world has to deal with mental wellness and we want to deal with it before it gets to an illness. And then the last one is, is, is the institutional side of it, which we saw with the unfortunate tragedies that happened in Malton with um, Ijaz Jodri, who was facing and struggling with schizophrenia, mental illness. And when his family reached out for support, they didn't get the health support that they needed. They got a police uh, breaking into the apartment of, of Ijaz and unfortunately killing him. And that speaks to the institutional problems that we have. So this isn't a conversation just to be having with, with one person to another. It's, it's, it's an entire society and institution from the bottom up that we need to recognize that this exists. So if the question goes back to what can you do, well, you can get involved in the different it's exactly what Gotham said. You need to be able to 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 reach out to your friends. It's it's about recognizing that parents need to create an open environment for their children. It's about us keeping our governments and our institutions accountable. And in, and it really is on every level of of. Uh, and 
Thank you, uh, Sukman, for sharing your views. And I think it's really important what you mentioned in terms of um, the, the, in, uh, getting our garment, holding our garment accountable. And I think oftentimes we wonder what to do, where do we reach out to? And what we forget is our elected officials. All of our elected officials have a responsibility. And we often ask somebody to, to call our elected officials to address an issue. Well, you know what? In our community here, our elected officials speak our language. So I would encourage parents and youth and, and grandparents to pick up a phone and call your elected officials and ask them that they need to do something about mental health. We only have uh, a few minutes. Um, Rakesh, I, I'd like you to share briefly about what would you say to the parents who are listening to the program? And I'd like then Sumit to say a few words as a professional as to what he would suggest uh, in terms of reaching out for help. Uh, can you tell us uh, your message to the parents and the youth in a brief as to what they should do if they have uh, someone who is experiencing mental illness? Uh, first of all, I'll say what Gautam said, what Sukhman said, you know, uh, I copied that. I said that definitely, you know, they made a point and they are absolutely right in their views, uh, 100%. And they have been put in this with this. These are my family. This is my family. Sukhman is a family. All those, you know, uh, Prashant's friends, they came for that time, okay? And right. it still is there and you can see that here. Okay, so I really, really appreciate it and that has made me live okay Gotham is there okay and how he has come up and uh, uh, so uh, coming back to the message there's nothing else but to fight back we have to because in this is a this is the, we are in the mood of survival right. and we have to fight back and we have to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. if the system has to change then we have to change the system and as you mentioned rightly, you said that uh, our elected officials, they have to come. Uh, on PCHS Media, I would like to say uh, to our viewers that will bring the uh, elected officials here. And this, uh, especially on Friday, as you know that we talked about mental health, that how can we, because we know that seriousness of it. So right. this program, although today is not as lengthy as it could be, but definitely next week and coming uh, onwards. We don't know what in the world people are doing and people will be able to do or whatnot. But I will say that our step, one small step, we will not rest till it is done. Thank you, Rakesh, for sharing uh, that message. It's really, really important. Sumit, we have very, uh, we have few seconds. Okay. If you can please suggest, uh, what would you say parents can do yes. and youth can do to reach out for help? Well, individually, youth and parents, in a micro level, need to focus on their biological, psychological, social, and spiritual health. And when it comes to reaching out, do not be afraid to talk to your personal support systems, your friends, your family, your doctors, or even people at PCHS. You can give us a call anytime at 905-677-0889, and we can be best to guide you for ourselves or somewhere else can best assist you. Mental health is something that should not be ignored, and we should prioritize it over capital and other values that do not focus on our mental health well-being. And on a macro level, we need to defund the police, not so they can't do their job when it comes to criminal issues, but when it comes to mental health issues, they have shown through their actions that they are not educated enough to deal with mental health crisis. Thank you, Sumit, for sharing that message. And I want to thank uh, Rakesh, uh, my co-host, uh, for sharing his experience as a father, his struggle uh, that he has and continues to fight. Uh, thank you to Sukhman for coming on as a friend. You are the support system, and this is what we're talking about. That system is needed. And Gautam, thank you so much for coming on as a brother and Sumit as a professional for suggesting you know, what we need to do. I hope that today's uh, session is, uh, is one that of value to you, uh, to the viewers. Uh, we all need to be mentally well, and we all need to understand mental illnesses in our community to support our loved ones. So I hope that you would share this program, although it is live today and live right now, but this program, you can watch it over and over. So please 
share it with your viewers. We will continue this conversation. Thank you for joining PCHS Media Kari Kari today. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you.